Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Bluefield College Coaches Show, live from the Bluefield <laughs> Applebee's in Bluefield, Virginia. And first up today, we have a Tazewell County native, Lakin Sparks from Bluefield College Softball. Big round of applause, everybody. Well, Lakin, thanks for being here. I know you didn't want to be first, and <laughs> why is that? I'm just awkward, and I wanted You're to see You're not that what, awkward. But I wanted to see, like, what was going to happen first. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, what's the season been like for you? Um, it's been a little challenging because, like, you know, we're getting uh, – we're trying to mesh as a team and, um, you know, having new recruits and, like, everything like that. We have, like, a bunch of people to come back first, but um, the new recruits, it's kind of hard to get meshed and everything, but I think we're getting there. What's been the biggest challenge as far as meshing with some of the new recruits, though? Um, I guess just, you know, coming from different places and there's, they're younger and, you know, we've got a lot of older people on the team, but I think that's just been the biggest challenge. But like I said, I think we're getting, we're getting there. Do some of the freshmen make you feel old? Yes. In yeah. what ways? Yeah. Cause like, uh, Reagan, she, I was like, when were you born? She was like 2000 and, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what year were you born? 99, but still, like, oh, okay. it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird. Oh, uh, wait, well, I mean. You're not that much older. That's baffling to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the dynamic like, though, with this team? Um, like, in what way? Like, like socially. Socially, um, we all pretty much get along. Well, technically, well, we all get along really well. Um, this is the first year, I think, in three years that um, we've all gotten along. We all hang out. Um, and there's really no, there's really no, like, social awkwardness, like, between the team. Like, we all get along. What do you guys do for fun? Um... Well, a lot of the times we just, like, hang out in the rooms and stuff. But um, Riley and Peanut, they have uh, Wii in their room. So, like, <laughs> we've been playing the Wii a little bit. But what's what's the best Wii sports game for you? Wii sports? Or just Wii, ge Wii, Wii in general? general? Mario Kart. Mario, Mario Kart? Kart? Do you yeah. win every time? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I get first. Sometimes I get second. But like <laughs> Who's the best player? Um, Peanut. Yeah. yeah. What peanut. makes her so good? I don't know. She's just like strategic. She knows how to like drift and stuff. I don't <laughs> know how to do that. Do you guys bring the Wii with you on the road? No. 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 What mm -hmm. do you guys do for fun on the road? Um, sometimes I bring my guitar and we play like we just hang out and play. That's something I wanted to get to and I'm glad we're getting to it early. You want to sing the national anthem. Yeah. Are you nervous about that at all? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I haven't sang the national anthem since like junior year of high school. But you're like a really musical person, though, because yeah. I see on Facebook that you play the guitar a lot. How long have you been able to play the guitar? Um, I think I was in, like, third grade when I started playing, so a while. <laughs> so who taught you to do that? Um, my papa started out, but then I started going to, like, to lessons from this guy that's local. Do your, is your family pretty musical? Um, my brother is. My mom plays the piano, but my brother, he's incredible at, like, the guitar, the bass, uh, piano, everything. Are you guys going to start a band? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, if you had to, what would the band name be? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you play Guitar Hero? Were you you were part of that generation, right? Yeah. I'm only four years yeah, older than you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I played all the time. What was the best song for you? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time. Um, what was that really hard song? Dragon Force. Yeah, I think that was through that the fire one. And yeah, through that one. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Could you ever put in the uh, orange? Yeah. The orange? Yeah. Really? <laughs> wow, you would have schooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to f uh, softball, though, I know you said it's been hard to mesh with a couple of the younger players on this team, but you have more people to work with you as far as a pitching staff. Yeah. What has that been like for you so you and Lexi Harmon don't have to carry the load as much? It's been great because, like, you know, last year it was Lexi pitched the first game, then I pitched the second game, and we'd come right, ne right to the next game uh, the next day and we'd have to pitch two more games. It's been nice because I pitched that 12-inning game, and the next day I didn't have to pitch anymore, <laughs> so it was pretty nice. So um, I know a lot of people, when they watch softball, they're like, oh, it's different than baseball because it's a more natural motion. Do you have anything to combat with that, though? Because I feel like if you throw 12 innings underhanded, even though it's – not considered a natural motion that has to take a lot out on you yeah right? yeah my arm I like the next day I felt like I had been hit by, hit by a train so <laughs> <laughs> it how might long, be natural but it still hurts how long have you been pitching um little league sometime but I don't remember exactly what year but it was in during little league so who taught you how to pitch my dad and he's a coach with you guys mm -hmm. now what's that like continuing into your college career with your dad still on the coaching staff um it's it's familiar, so I guess it's like, you know, 
it's fun. Um, we don't argue as much as we did in high school. We argued all the time in high school, but now we don't. I think it's like, you know, we're getting older, so like we're friends now. <laughs> so. What'd you guys argue about? Um, he would tell me I'm doing something wrong, and I wouldn't think I was. So then <laughs> I would just get mad at him. But. Um, another thing that's a little unique to you, you're local. Uh, Taswell High School, which is about 40 20 min minutes, 20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, shows how much I know about <laughs> where I live. Um, but was that something that was attractive to you where you wanted to play in college close to home? Yeah, it was because um, me and my family, like, we're super close. And uh, it was just nice to be able to still go home and, you know, see my friends. And the first week that I moved in um, freshman year, it was I was going home like every day. So that was pretty nice, but. What stopped that from happening? Because I got closer with people here. So it was nice because I've got, you know, you meet some of your best friends in college, so. Right. And, you know, you came here. It was a different head coach. And then Coach Bailey comes in, I believe it was your first year, right at the end of the first year? Yeah. Okay. What it, was that like for you as a transition? Um, it wasn't too difficult because, um, well, when I played basketball in high school, we had a different coach like almost every year. So um, it wasn't too difficult, but um, I think it's different going from a female coach to a male coach because it's just a different like aspect and stuff like that. But what exactly is different about it? Um, female coaches, I think they can just uh, relate better, if that makes sense. But um, Coach Bailey, he's done better this year, I think, relating with us as females. Have practices been pretty hard this year? Um yeah, for the most part, he killed us today. So What happened today? Uh, we ran about a mile and a half, uh, <laughs> and we ran like 11 bases, so it was, it was pretty rough today. But Who's the fastest player on the team? Um, I'd say Gabby. Um, I don't know, though. Macy's pretty fast. Macy, really? Yeah, Macy's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> what was your mile time in high school? Oh, uh, <laughs> not good. <laughs> gotcha. um, you guys have started out – the beginning of the season and you haven't played at home has that been challenging for you guys as well to play all of your games on the road to begin the year um no I think it's been pretty good because you know you get you get all those like jitters out before you get home and you know you get to play at home the rest of the season and it makes it better with like um finals and stuff too so tough weekend for you guys uh what exactly happened do you think um I think we just uh didn't play our best softball it was you know we had um, a lot of errors, and but I think we'll bounce back this week. So, What's something that you want to improve on with yourself moving forward for the rest of the year? Um, I guess, you know, composure and uh, being a better teammate and, uh, you know, being a better support system for my teammates. Gotcha. Great answer from Lake and Sparks. We're about to have the lightning round. She's been great <laughs> on the Bluefield College Coaches Show. Uh, what Lake and Sparks, pitcher for the Bluefield College softball team, what is your favorite song to play on the guitar? Jolene by Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite place to travel? Um, I love Tennessee, like Gatlinburg area. Last movie you watched? Um, what was it? It was called, I think, The Bright Places. It's on Netflix. I don't know. Was it good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the hardest class you're in right now? Um... I only have two right now. They're all really? Yeah. yeah, but it starts tomorrow, so I've oh. got four more starting tomorrow. Which one is that? Um, what that I have now? Well, that that's starting tomorrow. The tough one. I don't. I don't remember what classes I'm starting <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Who has the best social media on the team? Taylor Strange. <laughs> wow. Didn't even, <laughs> didn't even hesitate. Lake and Sparks. What's the best advice you ever got? Um, protect your heart, guard your heart with everything you have. Who is a person that you would want to eat with, dead or alive, throughout history, have dinner with? Dead or alive. Um, that's a tough question. Uh, Lexi Harmon told me to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> she, she asked me that earlier, and I was like, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to go with, like, Dolly Parton or something okay. like that. <laughs> All right. uh, Dolly's getting a lot of love today. <laughs> and finally, Lake and Sparks, what's your favorite thing about Bluefield College? Um, it's close. like It's like a family environment. Lake and Sparks, everybody. Bluefield College softball. <laughs> Thanks, Lake, and you were great. All right, next up we have Garrett Schilling, the assistant coach for baseball.
Pin it a little bit over towards other way. A little bit more towards him. Perfect. All right, Garrett Schilling, everybody. Big round of applause for Garrett Schilling. All right, you guys won today. It was 10 to 9 on a walk-off. What was that game like for you as a coach? Uh, it was very, very nerve-wracking. Um, glad we got it done. We definitely needed a win at conference. Um, glad to see Pepe step up and get the big at bat. Um, it was a good team win for us. Um, got a little shaky. Gave up four runs in the bottom of the uh, top of the ninth. Um, but was happy to see our team rally back and be able to pick up the win. What were regardless. you going to be like if you guys ended up losing that game on this show today? It would have been a very short conversation <laughs> between you and me. <laughs> um, it was a very tenacious win for you guys. You were down at one point and then led by three. Drew McConnell took a lead 5-4. Then you guys went up 9-5. And then it was 9-9 going into the bottom of the ninth. What does that win say about the heart of this Bluefield College baseball program? Um, it says just we don't give up. You know, it just kind of shows the tenacity that we have in that, you know, you know, we have been struggling a little bit, but they're still there. They still care. They still want to win. They're still going to fight all the way to the very last pitch. How have you guys been able to manage with the injuries that have really stacked up against you this year? It's been very tough. Um, you know, we've had to just kind of call on some guys to do some things that they weren't very comfortable with and spend a little time doing some extra things with them. Uh, we just had to figure it out, and when your name gets called, you better figure it out. Otherwise, you know, the game's going to go on, regardless if we have Ozzie Millette in the lineup or Anderson Zapsis. Um, we're going to play regardless. Who is somebody that's impressed you throughout those situations? Somebody that has really impressed me is Elino Mejia. Um, has really stepped up at the shortstop position, as well as second base, as you saw today with Carlos Torres going down. But on the days that he's not playing, he's a great teammate who brings the energy every day. You guys got a game tomorrow, and I just wanted to talk about the grind that you guys go through. I've worked in professional baseball before, and I understand that pro baseball has a pretty big grind as well. But there's something about college baseball that particularly stresses the assistants because you guys are going through the operations. You guys are doing the laundry. You don't have the managers. I mean, you were a little bit late today because you guys are going to Ohio tomorrow. What is it like just on your general stress level to be an assistant baseball coach? Um. You know what, it is stressful, but what job isn't stressful? Right. Um, you know, I get very blessed. I get to coach baseball on a daily basis. So you're telling me i got to do a little bit of laundry, a little bit of field work, and do a little bit of technology, but I get to gear up every day with the guys? It's pretty non-stressful. Year three of you being a coach, I know you said it's not stressful. Yeah. Uh, but what's something that is kind of – was a surprise to you going from a player as a coach that you really didn't expect? The, the aspects of the game that you look at, you know, as a player, you're really tunnel visioned in on what you're looking at. Um, but as a coach, you're looking at everything. I'm looking at body language. I'm looking at, you know, guys in the outfield. I'm looking at positioning. It, the amount of information that you take in as a coach is mentally exhausting. It's just so much more. I'd imagine that you have to learn a lot more about baseball. What is something as far as the strategy of the game that maybe you've picked up in the last three years? You know what's funny is – as you become a coach, it's not so much about coaching baseball. It's about coaching individuals. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn more about coaching people and being around people as a coach rather than as a player. So you were a player here. Let's take a step back in time. Yep. You're coming out of California. How did you meet Mike White? I met Mike White uh, the first day I was on campus. I actually didn't meet Mike White until I showed up. Uh, <laughs> I was recruited by a, uh assistant named Ryan Lambert um, that was here when I was here, and then uh, – yeah, I met Mike White when I showed up with my roommate, Dylan Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Love Dylan Ruth. Uh, was there anything that was scary about moving from California? Which part of California are you from, by the way? Originally from San Diego, California. Okay, so yep. everybody knows that San Diego and Bluefield are exactly the same. So there was yeah. no culture difference at all. No, none at um, all. None <laughs> at all. Uh, but what was some of the, the biggest culture shock moments that you had moving from California to Virginia? It, it's just so much slower. There's not a whole lot of people out here, which is awesome. Um, because with Bluefield College, you know, you have the time to excel at academics and you have the time to excel in the weight room and also do the extra things at the baseball field and then have a social life as well. Um, in junior college, I was working a, a full-time job and playing baseball and doing a bunch of other things, and it was just a lot of stuff. 
I, I had Lexi Harmon on the show two weeks ago, and she was a JUCO product out of a school in Florida. And you played at a JUCO in California. I love talking to guys about their JUCO experiences because it seems like a lot of gnarly stuff ends up oh, happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are some of the horror stories if that are you're wor- uh, willing to share here? You know, some of the JUCO? horror stories, you know, I remember sleeping in the van a couple times on a three-hour ride to Imperial Valley after a game where it's 120 and we play a doubleheader. But we got to get it done in April. So, um, other than that, you know, there's not much I can say on on <laughs> in public. <laughs> okay. Understood. Um, you know, going to the NAIA level, what exactly was that like as far as competition and how hard the game is from JUCO to NAIA? Honestly, it's pretty similar. Um, you know, everybody likes to bag on NAIA, but we've got some pretty good guys in our league. And you take a look at Tennessee Wesley and Brian Reinhardt. Um, you know, they've got some some very talented players that don't play in NAI because they can't play. Right. So I'd, uh, I'd say the level is pretty similar, but NAI so far has been elevated from junior college. You guys have Tennessee Wesleyan this weekend. What is something that makes Tennessee Wesleyan consistently good? They just have consistently good players. <laughs> uh, top to bottom, one through nine out of the bullpen, the three starting pitchers that they throw at you are just consistently good. Um, you know, shifting away from baseball, but also keeping it in the foreground. I think that's something that's funny that I've caught on to after Bluefield College baseball games and win or lose. You take a fungo bat and you start playing with – you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, that? That's Champy, everybody's favorite. Um, yeah, it's funny. I had a feeling you were going to bring Champy up. <laughs> uh, Champ is a uh, pit bull mix that our assistant coach, Thomas Edelston, found on the side of the road in December, two Decembers ago. So we've had Champ about a year and a half now and uh, – yeah, he's quickly become the clubhouse dog and, and the clubhouse favorite. Um, everybody comes into my office and uh, never asks, hey, Garrett, how are you doing? It's, <laughs> hey, where's Champ? Right. Yeah. How does the dog just, like, behave all day? I had basset hounds my whole life, mm-hmm. and they don't, you know, you can't train them to do anything. Yeah. Um, how does that dog just not make a noise? Like, it kind of, like, startled me when a dog walked out of the bottom of your desk when I went into the clubhouse. Yeah, he, um, he's very nervous. He, he's very shy and very timid, but he's a very well-behaved dog, and, and he loves being at the clubhouse. He loves the boys, and the boys love him. So sometimes we have to wrangle him back a little bit because the players will come out, and the players in the middle of practice will go get champ, or you'll find them underneath the desk <laughs> petting champ. Uh, well, I still think that's great, though. It, he is so fast when you hit the balls out to center field. I mean, just like – no hesitation, bolts out there and comes back. It's what he lives for. I, he, he's like his dad. He just loves being at the ballpark all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, let's talk about you being at the ballpark. You were a catcher at Bluefield College. Yep. Do you think that's a good position to transition from player to coach? I think so. I think, you know, the catcher's the one spot in the entire field where you see the entire field. I just think we have to deal with the pitching staff, the, the infield, the outfielders. We talk with the hitters. I think you just – I think it translates well. Uh, recruiting for you, what's mm-hmm. that grind been like? Recruiting is tough um, with the schedule, but um, I do a lot of West Coast stuff. So uh, on the phones late, uh, early mornings. Uh, I know my fiance is not always the most <laughs> appreciative of that, but it's part of the job, and you just got to find be able to go out and get players. Well, speaking of West Coast, the league that you coach in in the summertime, what's that called again? The Palm Springs Collegiate League. How's the competition out there? Um, it's pretty good. It's uh, it's a developmental league that we have set up out there. Um, you know, we, we really focus on bringing guys in, um, getting them better, or getting guys recruited. It just depends on what guys are looking for. What's the difference as far as your coaching style, if there is a difference between that and at Bluefield College? Um, it's much more relaxed, much more relaxed because we're not looking to win as many games. Um, you know, we're looking to just get guys repetitions and get guys better. Uh, what exactly – how did your team do out there? Uh, did pretty good. Finished fourth in the league. Uh, got banged out on a uh, walk-off in the playoffs, so it was a little tough. But uh, good group of kids and really enjoyed um, having that group out there. And I feel like guys really got sent off to their colleges a whole lot better than when they showed up. And this is a wood bat team? Yes, this is a is wood Is there bat any team. difference in that? Uh, I think you figure out with a wood bat who can actually hit and who can't. I think metal kind of hides that a little bit and you get away with it. But a wood bat, really, you really figure out who can play and who can't. How would you do with that? Uh, I actually liked wood a whole lot better. 
Um, we've actually, as a college, have switched over in the off season. Anytime we're in the cage or not playing, we swing wood. Does does that you think that gets the players a lot better though? I think it does. Gotcha. I think it does. It really they can't hide. They can't hide. It really exposes what your weaknesses are, and that's what we want to do is expose the weakness and then work on it. So you have a trip to Ohio tomorrow. Yes. What's your day going to be like? What's the Tuesday, t March 10th, like for Garrett Schilling? Tuesday we'll get up, probably get a workout in, try to. Um, just depends on what time I go to bed. And then uh, 8 o'clock we'll be in the clubhouse till 8.30 so the guys can get their laundry. And then 8.30 we'll be headed over to the bus for uh, Q to fire up the bus for us. And then uh, – Load the bus up, go up there, try to go to Portsmouth, get a W, and then come on home, do some laundry, and get ready to turn around on JV Wednesday at Emory and Henry. Never stops, man. Never stops. Uh, before we get to the lightning round, okay. you mentioned you talked about working out. And I just want to talk about this whole CrossFit thing <laughs> because, to me, it kind of seems like a cult, and I want you to try okay. to defend that. Um. You know, it is an occult. It, it, <laughs> for, for me, getting out of baseball, I'm a very competitive person. So – for me, getting out of that, I had to have an outlet for that to happen. And it actually, um, they say Planet Fitness is the safe zone of gyms. I, I would contest that the CrossFit gym, CrossFit Bluefield, is probably one of the safest places you could go. Um, it's just a big family. It's my family away from my family. So It was a joke when I called it a cult, but I didn't mean okay. to offend you. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You're not the only one that's brought that up either. Um, all right, Garrett, you've been great. Let's finish this out with the lightning round. So Garrett Schilling, former Bluefield College baseball player, as well as the assistant coach, who is the player that is the funniest when you're coaching first? Anderson Zapsis. What does he talk about? He, what doesn't he talk about? <laughs> he, is a, um, he is a baseball player, and if you've seen that mullet, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. And the mustache. Yes, and the mustache. Uh, what's your favorite place to stop at on the road? Favorite place to stop at is Sheets. She, yep. it's okay. I tweeted about this not too long ago. Okay. And it was controversial. Do you think Sheets is a restaurant? Sheets is a gas station that serves food. I'm going to go with restaurant. You're going to go with a restaurant? Yeah, maybe okay. that's just how white trash I am that I think that it is. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Like with Sheets, we don't eat, you don't eat gas station food in California. It just ends up, you end up at the hospital because it just doesn't go well. So Sheets that was that was a culture thing. It took me two years to figure out that Sheets made decent food. <laughs> the guys had to convince me that it was it was actually good. We well, got the touch screens, and then all of a sudden you have the appetizer sampler. It's yeah. great. It's, it's awesome. Dylan Ruth. There you go. <laughs> there's one for the there's one for Dylan Ruth. As yeah. he, he figured out that Sheets was pretty good. <laughs> Shout out Dylan now in Midland, Texas. Uh, what is the best baseball moment of your entire life? Best baseball moment. Actually, Thomas Huddles and I were talking about that. It was a walk-off win in 2016 against Milgan at home. Biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve. Showing up late. Be on time. What is your favorite sport that's not baseball? Hockey. Who's your favorite team? L.A. Kings. L.A. Kings. Yep. Okay. California boy through and through. <laughs> to close it out for Garrett Schilling here on the Bluefield College Coaches Show, what is your favorite thing about Bluefield College? Favorite thing about Bluefield College, it's just one big family. You know, there's never, there's never a, a mean face. There's never a hello. You know, there's never not a hello. It's, you know, everybody's always extending a hand out, always wants to talk to you, asking how the family is, asking how the team's doing, or wants to talk. Sometimes they want to talk about how the team's doing. You don't really want to talk, but – it's a big, giant family. Um, they're always accepting. They're always inviting. And, and that was the, one of the things that has drawn me here and has kept me here. Garrett, you're a great guest. Thank you for rushing this into your hectic schedule. Anytime, anytime. Good, good luck tomorrow. I got I to gotta brag on you a little bit. Um, Mike Crowley, the uh, head coach of Tripp McConnell, his wife wanted me to tell you that uh, you did an excellent job on all of your sports broadcasting. And my dad says this as well. I still think you're one of the best um, – sports broadcasters and small college sports and hey. uh, you really do an well, excellent job thank you so much that means a lot to me and with that i uh, want to close out on a very nice thing that garrett Schilling just said don't know the next time we're going to be here so stick to around to our twitter at bluefield rams and bluefield college athletics on facebook so that is it for the bluefield college coaches show another round of applause for garrett Schilling, everybody and uh, have a great night